Good day students, my name is Imran Mohamed, technician in the Instrumentation and Robotics Research Lab. In the Robotics Research Lab, we have the Fanuc Industrial Robot. It has six axes of motion controlled by these servos and is also fitted with a pneumatic actuator. Alright, here we have the operation of the pneumatic ripper of the robot. This one. Okay. within a safety cage that disables a robot should anything enter the cage during operation. The robot is used to help students understand programming. It is also used in final year project. Pre and students, welcome again. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to display a simple manufacturing technology process. Going to, I'm going to go into go through the process from the beginning to the end. Let's say if we have to produce a decorative component like a steel pan. It's a miniature size pan and it's a, it, it could be used as a decorative component. In the initial stage, what we have to do is we have to produce a drawing. Sketch it goes with a drawing. After that, it has to go through a casting process. Casting meaning where you have to melt the material, ferrous or non ferrous ferrous, point it to a hole and get the, 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 the casting done. So once you produce the joint, let's say if you want to produce this, this um, decorative component of a steel pan, you have to produce the joint. We have to get it carved out of wax. So we melt the wax, produce a slab, and we carve it out. I don't have the carved aluminum here as yet. But what we have here, this is the carve, this is the carving done of a bird and a petal. And we have the steel pan style around here. 
This was carved manually out of wax. Okay, so as I say again, we have the petal, the bird, and the petal sitting on a steel pan here. What we did, we did a aluminum one, we did a, 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 a wax one out of steel pan. We mold it in the foundry, we cast it in green, there's a process called green sand mold. So we cast it and we get this end product. This is aluminum. Okay, the end product is the steel pan here now. Okay. Now there is a male and female part of this. At the end of the day, we have to we have to place a blank. This is a blank aluminum disc. We have to put it over here. There is a process that is called rubber part forming. Where we put the rubber like this here. Mount it on a hydraulic press and we compress. As we compress, the rubber will be forced into the profile of the solid steel pan. And in that way, we get the end product, which is this. So let me do it over again and we produce a sketch or a drawing, carve it out of wax. Cast it out of aluminum and prepare the blank. The blank will be produced on the lathe. This blank is produced by. It's difficult to hold this on the, on the, on the lathe. This blank is produced where you put two pieces of ply together and we rotate it on the lathe. Friction, this is a process that we call friction driving. So we produce the blank. Put it on the die, put the rubber on it, compress it, and the rubber forms the profile of the die. That we this is a simple manufacturing process that can be done to produce a decorative component. Thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Hassan I am the Senior Laboratory Assistant for the Thermodynamics Lab. I just want to run through some in the equipment. So this here is the diesel engine test bed, which for labs for first year students. Now, so it's a diesel engine simulator. Uh, we run this engine and take readings from it. Uh, and then you can work out whatever calculations that you need to work out. Uh, that's just a brief summary of this machine. This other machine here, this is another test bed, but this is used for testing like biofuel and other uh, stuff uh, well biofuel and um, well it starts off it starts off with diesel and then we integrate the biofuel into the system and see how we can generate note any changes or or efficiency in the engine. So this is the Rankin cycler, it's a boiler, it's used for one of the lamps. Um, the miniature boiler, we have everything contained in this. In this we have the turbine, the boiler itself, and the condenser. And we, get, we, we use it to take various measurements such as DC amperage, DC volts, boiler temperature, Boiler pressure and a lot of other stuff. Right, so this is a larger scale version of a boiler. This is just a display so that see that students could see how the makeup of a boiler inside a boiler is. This is a fire and tube boiler where the fire passes through the tubes here and heats up the water in the tank itself. So another display we have in the thermal lab is 
this is the environment. They are coming closer and see how it is. Let's uh, for the students to see exactly what is contained and how a turbine does function. So you see the air intake comes from the front and it compresses and then it expands with the mixture gas. And that's just a brief over. Alright, so here we have our 3D printer. In the same that we have three 3D printers, right? Now one here, this is the more of a production 3D printer, this is the to work day and night. Here we have a, like a medium size or copy project. Also, we have a small mini one here, as you can see. So, so if you notice, each 3D printer has a small work envelope, as we call it. The work envelope is where it's, it determines the size of the work that can be printed. It's a small one, and right? this probably are um, six inches by six inches if it fits. Here, we have a bigger one. You can look to our wood, wood size, could print around 10 12 inches by a height of probably 12 inches. So when you design your product with, with moving parts, when you 3D print, it will be able to move. Such as if you design a car with a steering, it will, the steering will turn. Hello today, my name is Edlina Hanuman Singh and I'm the technician responsible for the Industrial Instrumentation Laboratory. In this laboratory, we deal with final year students uh, with high pertinence to electronics on their projects uh, when they are through doing similar building and what have you. They will come here concerning their electronics and le electrical uh, part of the projects. Today, I'm just going to demonstrate. Uh, simple techniques that usually we will relate to the students first before getting into building the circuit. And one of the basic things that they must know and uh, deal with properly is uh, soldering. What is soldering? Soldering is, first thing first, this is a complete circuit board in which it consists of components. There's a task to be done by this by this board. If there's loose components or unsoldered or improper soldering, known as um, full soldering, you will have this use with the breaking down of the board and what have you. So again, I am going to make a demonstration as to how it is that uh, we 
the students and myself uh, bring this job to total reality. Okay? So first thing first, you will mount the ball on this special apparatus that, that we have made. Okay? Again, what we are attempting to do is to remove a component. I'm just demonstrating this to you all, and this is how the student operate. Now, let me introduce. This is Mr. Sodronayan, in which he has a tip that is pretty hot. It could be in the uh, vicinity of 100 watts, actually, but it is set up there. That is a, 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 a test control system that is... Uh, adjustable by temperature so so I am at present I have adjusted it to 22 watts okay so you see that this can be far more heated than that all right so before we start this we would want to uh, clean the clean the solder and I Mr. Solder and I I'm saying mister with this because please if it touches you could have serious damage. All right, so first we will clean the heated solder right now. Yeah? Uh, we will try, we will try with the solder. This is the solder there. That's the stack array of solder that we have there, in which it, they, they, they come in different gauges. Okay, and here I go. So I'm, I'm just going to try it, making sure that it has a shiny look. Anytime it's black, it's impure. It clearly shows that uh, we have not implemented or taken out the majority of the impurities. Flux render that assistant. All right. So uh, let's assume I am going to remove. I would want to remove something. Today. Okay. So I'm removing. There is a capacitor here. I'm going to remove this. You can zoom in on it. All right. So this is the area here where the capacitor is to be removed. I would have to get a desolderer. Right? This is a desolderer. What it does is when the, the solder is in molten uh, form, then this will, uh, upon pressing it, it, there will be a suction on, on deploying it. And that will remove this, this solder. So here I go in trying to remove this. So I will heat and remove. Heat and remove. So I can comfortably now pull out the component. All right. Again, if you look in into the uh, the board itself, we have no physical um, damage to done to the edge itself, so it could be used back. I am attempting to put back in the component. Right, so it's in and uh, right now I am trying to mechanically lock it in place good liquid flux has to be applied if you want a nice clean soldering and finally solder is up applied now for the first time we are now going to actually make a bond so in making this bond, what you will do is solder an iron on uh, the work, work point, and then you put the solder. People have made the mistake and put the iron on the solder first, no. So you must bring a certain heat there and then, all right? And then and now you have a permanent uh, bond uh, that has no form of cold solder. Cold soldering will mean there is a loose connection. All right. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate quickly how it is two wires is bonded. Here you would be able to see it properly. All right. So, two wires again. Don't forget the flux. All right. So we apply some flux on it. What the flux does is coat it and gives the, when you solder in, it actually pulls out the impurities and the bond of the solder and heat will hold on the wire itself. 
without any impurities. So here we go. And boom, that's it. We have a proper soldering uh, connection that cannot come apart. And by the way, this board that I'm holding here is actually from a past project. Okay, in which a lot of soldering was supposed to be done. Uh, it's a, actually an M-Fill student uh, circuit done right and one of the um, the tables across there uh, that's the workstation there are eight workstation in this this um in this lab all right so this consists of uh, transistors which is driver transistors and the opto isolator ICs the scale behind soldering these things you've got to be very good to solder it because of the pins the, the, the smallness of the pins and it was actually done by myself and the students all right we have access the board is as such that the input from arduino board this amplifies the signal and drives motor through the output of it so it's a it's what you call an esc electronic uh, um, speed control okay esc this is a, a something that was done here locally this is how it is all right and uh and that's it concerning the the one little demonstration of this lab there are so many other things that can be demonstrated concerning servo motors um, dc motors uh, arduinos mega drones and so many other things but i'm just here to demonstrate that because of the soldering technique that has to be implemented and um, practiced by the students will produce great projects due to functionality of their uh, circuit board. Thank you very much. Good day everyone and today we're going to look at the basic functions of a multimeter. First of all we're going to start by checking the voltage in an AC supply. AC stands for alternating current. Example the plugs that they have at home. So we're going to turn the meter onto the V here and you see the wave that wave stands for alternating current. So we're just going to check a normal 110 volt plug and see what we get. 108.78 So we're looking at this component here which I took out from a lab equipment. So it is two resistors in parallel and we are going to find out how much ohms it is. Alright, so we switch our meter onto this symbol here, which is a symbol for ohms, right? Resistance is measured in ohms. So we're going to check and see now. Zero, alright, it's no more. Okay, 200.7 ohms. Alright. Right, so now we're going to look at connectivity. Right, so it simply means that we just want to make sure that here is connected. The, this part of the plug is connected to here. So when we plug in this, it will transfer through the wire and we will get the current and voltage through here. Right, so this here has three leads. Here have three leads. So which means the wire, three core wire. Right, so now this should be connected to this. This should be connected to this, and here should be connected to here. All right, today we're just going to check and see to make sure that there's no break in the wire or anything disturbing the flow from here to reach here. All right, so we're just going to check this one here. So I put, put it here. Let's see if you can see here. All right, we hear the beep. So we know that it is there. If I put it here, we will not hear the beep because this lead is not connected to this lead here. This lead is connected to this lead. Now we're going to look at a AAA energizer battery, right? Also known as a pen light battery. Now these are really 1.5 volts DC, but this is a used one. So we will see how much voltage we get from it. All right, so. I'm going to switch my meter here to the V with a dash on it, which means direct current. Alright, so one lead here and one lead here. 
and we're getting 1.03 volts DC. As I said before, it's a used battery, and that's why we got that voltage. The rating for it is 1.5 volts DC. Good day students, and welcome to the Pattern Laboratory. In this lab, we are equipped with various equipment and skilled technicians to fulfill the woodworking needs of students for undergraduate and postgraduate projects. Today, we will be looking at a spur gear. A gear is simply a tooted wheel that works with others to alter the relation between the speed of a driving mechanism and the speed of the driven parts. So the first step, we took our diagram and we stuck it onto the material. The material that we are using today is called PVC board. It is made from PVC resin, has the same process ability as wood, can be drilled, sawed, hammered, etc. This is what the material looks like. So as you can see on our diagram, it is on a scale 1 to 1, meaning that it is the exact size that we want it on the sheet of paper. So all we have to do now is I will show you the different steps and processes of cutting it right, to get the desired shape that we are looking for. Right? All the measurements um, are in inches, right? they give you the angles, the, um, the amount of teeth, everything so the first well after this step here i am going to draw lines coming down here and we will be cutting it on the table saw right, the reason why we're cutting it on the table saw for is so that we could get pretty much close to the exact um drawing so that we wouldn't be wasting any material so this is the table saw that I mentioned earlier in the video. Right, so I'll just go down and show you how we could cut material on the table saw. Right, there's a couple of different ways we could cut it. We could cut to get angles, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, we could get straight 90 degrees, it all depends. Right, so now this here is what we call the band. Right, so we use this, we take our measurements, six inches, and the, the material would be between parallel to the band and the saw for the 90 degrees cut. So as you can see, we will get a nice smooth cut here. Okay. Another way of cutting, with the table saw also, we use, with the use of a, a mitre gauge, right? we can cut angles with this. So let's give you a demo on Alright, so this is set at 45 degrees. So we can get a 45 degrees cut with the table saw so also. Alright, as you can see I've drawn my lines and I've set it up onto the table saw so here. So we are going to make the cut and start the process of making the gear. So we cut up the material and we get it down to a smaller size. So now it's time to form the circle here. Right? So we end up with a few pieces of scrap board like this. 
a few pieces. So we have a recycle box where we throw it in so that students can use it later on for projects. Right, so this piece of equipment here is called the bandsaw. This equipment is used so that we could cut around the circle, we could cut all inside the gear, tooth all here, we could cut with the bandsaw. So I'm just going to show you an example of how, how we would be cutting this round part here with the bandsaw. Always remember, always remember that using the table saw, the band saw, any piece of equipment, you must always have on your safety glasses and no loose jewelry on your hand or no long sleeve clothing or anything like that because you don't want anything to get caught up with the blade and or anything like that, right? So we're going to start now. So we finished cut the piece into a circle. As you can see, we cut it to the line as close as possible, but we didn't want to go in further than that. So we will use this 24 inch sanding this to sand it and get a perfect circle. Right? I'm going to turn it on and we're going to start the sand. Okay, so we got the circle and now we are going to work on the internal diameter here, right, which has a radius of 0.5 inches, which will have a diameter of 1 inch, but first we will use a center punch to punch a hole in the center so that we could get the drill bit of the circle. Sorry. So we got the circle that we wanted. Now it's time to work on the internal diameter. First of all, we will be using a center punch to find the center of the circle. The radius is 0.5 inches, which is a 1 inch diameter. So we will be using a 1 inch drill bit to drill the hole to get the required size. Right. So we have the piece screwed on to our board here, and now we are going to drill the internal diameter. Alright, so you see why the center punch is important for? Because the drill bit will find the center here, and that is what we're going to use to drill, right? So, go and pour on and drill. Right, so the final piece now is we are going to use back the bandsaw to cut out the tooth of the gears. So you can zoom in and look and we're going to start a cut one. Mm -hmm.
Right, so now we have the gear cut out. It's not just a rough cut with the bandsaw, and now we'll use the sandpaper or emery, and we will sand it out smooth. So what you are looking at is the finished product. Right, so from a square piece of board, we drilled and cut to form a spur gear. Then you have here, you can see here, this is what we call a hammer mill, and this one was particularly designed to actually crush the coconut husk and make it somewhat of a, a soil, soil like material they use for plants, or what we call mulch. Right? And at the back, if you look carefully, this one here right, is basically a fermenter for the cocoa bean. So you actually put the cocoa beans in there and you allow it to ferment over these. And you'll see where the liquid and stuff will drain out. And after this, you'll take it to dry it.